Empire of the Ants is everything you could possibly hope for with a title like that. Imagine if a bunch of first time actors got together with the filmmaking crew of a lousy 70s porno to try and rip off Jaws and The Fly with the budget of your average middle school lunchbox and you'll start to grasp just how hilariously terrible this fucker is. If you're a lover of bad movies, this will tick off almost all of your boxes. Unbelievably terrible dialogue? Check. Well, I don't know. I guess I... I guess I just thought you were one of those macho, phony types, you know? The kind whose brains fall out every time he unzips his fly. Kids. Say, what is this? Group therapy? Bargain basement special effects? Check. Awful actors and actresses playing awful characters, tons of checks. God damn it, why do you shoot down everything that I say? You never did like working for me, just because I'm a woman. Lots of schlocky gore, monsters, sex, or at least attempted sex, and stupefyingly dumb decisions to separate from the rest of your group when you're all being attacked by giant ants. Every single check. Let's go this way. So the movie is a ridiculously cheap remake slash outright pure theft of Jaws, except they prove they know the words but not the music. Except, no, wait, they steal the music too. Cans of toxic waste are dumped that make ants on a Florida island turn huge and evil. Joan Collins is a sleazy real estate and possible sex addict that is trying to sell shitty lots of land on this island. You're so terrific in the sack that it almost justifies the excessive salary that I have to pay you. She boats in a bunch of random people to act as the victims, and within a few scenes of getting to know them, one thing is made clear. Every girl is a sex-crazed idiot, and every guy is a misogynistic douchebag that hates everything but still wants to fuck everything. In Jaws, we like Roy Scheider's character within the first two minutes, just from the relaxed but loving relationship he clearly has with his family. Compare that to this. Huh? Oh, oh, shit. Oh. So we hate all the characters and want them to die, which is good, because the movie doesn't actually waste too much time in starting to pick them all off. The special effects are just hilariously terrible, mixing bad models with bad animatronics and bad puppets and bad mat work and just bad everything. Because of that, these scenes are frickin' awesome. Unlike Jaws, which was elevated from schlock to art simply because of the talented filmmaking and style of Steven Spielberg, Empire of the Ants heads straight to the bottom of the barrel with tasteless gore, blatant theft of everything from John Williams themes to the POV visuals of the fly, and absolutely flabbergasting character decisions. By this point, almost an hour into the 90 minute movie, I have no idea which character is the main protagonist, or who the hero or heroine is, or even who the villain is other than the big ants. They're all the same and all unlikable. They pop into a boat and start going down a river, where we learn more about their backstory through hammy acting and really awful ADR sound. This leads to a sequence that is so pointless you can't help but laugh. There's a fork in the river and they argue violently about which route to take. So they all follow him and go down that path and then, oh shit, more ants, let's go back and take the other route. Plot lines are supposed to follow the characters and their decisions, not the other way around. Imagine if in Jurassic Park after Sam Neill climbs down to get Timmy, they just climb right back up the mysterious wall from nowhere and hop back in the car and drive to safety. Each decision should lead to another problem the characters must solve, rather than just saying, ah, oh, fuck it, let's go back and redo that again. More attacks follow, with the camera shaking and swaying around as much as possible to hide the fact that a bunch of stoned actors are flopping around the water with big plastic insect toys. They get back on land, and Joan Collins says, by far the funniest line in the whole film. But I just don't care what the rest of you do. I am going to go in this direction. Marilyn! Marilyn! Eventually, they make it to a town where they're warned to stay away from the sugar refinery, and now the movie wants to start ripping off Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 with evil cops and even a surprisingly decent little fake out when they think a big ant is nearby.
They're trying to escape Dukes of Hazard style, but you know, no dice. That's when we discover the terrifying plot. The town hypnotizes their citizens using the Queen Anne's pheromones into a punch of zombies. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a real thing you're looking at. Isn't she beautiful? She's fantastic. She needs us. That's why it has to be this way. Why we must obey. We have no choice. She makes us do it. At first, the people don't understand. They must be forced into submission. And just when you thought the movie couldn't be any goofier, the hero lights a flare when we hear a human voice screaming for the Queen Anne. Like, Jesus Christ, I mean, it sure sounds human. I don't know, maybe they ran out of fake animal squeals by that point in the budget. This shit makes all the zombies get unzombied for some reason, and unknown main character number four blows that fucker sky high. But hey, give the movie credit, they use real fire with real explosions, which even a $250 million Superman film can't do these days. One of these things is not like the others. One of these things doesn't belong. So is Empire of the Ants a bad movie? Well, yeah, obviously. But is it an entertaining bad movie? Absolutely. It's chock full of laugh out loud moments, and the shoddy special effects alone make it worth watching for fans of total horror schlock. It's technically a one fry movie, but the hilarity factor is probably a three, so I'll just take the middle ground and give her two fries out of five. Changed my mind about not liking you. That's all. Mm.